Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2015 Pro Bono Institute Annual Dinner. Please welcome the chair of the Pro Bono Institute Board of Directors, Jim Jones, Principal of Legal Management Resources, LLC, and Senior Fellow at Georgetown University Law Center. Wow. I don't think I ever got a fanfare before. Good evening, everyone. Like herding cats, or pushing a wheelbarrow full of frogs, or something like that. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. And welcome to beautiful Gotham Hall. As chair of the board of directors of the Pro Bono Institute, I'm delighted that all of you could join us for this wonderful evening. Our theme for this year's dinner is Celebrate the Future of Pro Bono, an opportunity for us to focus on the critically important work that lies ahead of us, even as we celebrate how far we have come as a profession in advancing the causes of civil rights and equal justice through pro bono service. We have indeed come a long way, but sadly there's a lot of work still to do. Tonight's dinner is a particularly special occasion for two important reasons. Now, before I talk about the two important reasons, I'm going to wait until the room quiets down a little bit. All right? I know it's a very loud, lively space, but I really do have a couple of important things to say. So, if ever, thank you very much. As I was saying, tonight's dinner is a particularly special occasion for two very important reasons. First, we are celebrating an historic year for PBI as we mark the 20th anniversary of the groundbreaking law firm Pro Bono Challenge, a program that helped enhance and expand law firm pro bono commitments around the country. As some of you will no doubt remember, the pro bono landscape looked very different 20 years ago. To be sure, many firms had pro bono programs but the commitments to those efforts were often not at the levels needed to meet the magnitude of the access to justice problem that we confronted. Today, in many firms, pro bono has become a core value, a source of pride, a business imperative, and yes, even a source of friendly competition with other law firms. We still have work to do, but we've come a long way. Tonight, we celebrate and salute all of our 140 law firm pro bono challenge signatory firms. Your unprecedented commitment to pro bono has resulted in literally millions of hours of pro bono service over the past two decades. And your efforts reflect the very best of what our profession is all about. But tonight is special for a second reason as well. Because this evening, we pay tribute to PBI's founder, Esther Lardent, who is with us this evening. As most of you know, uh, Esther for health reasons, stepped down as PBI's president and CEO earlier this year, and we are currently actively engaged in a search for her successor. On behalf of Esther and the PBI staff and our volunteer leadership, I want to thank all of you for the good wishes and warm expressions of support that we have received. I have known Esther for more than 20 years going all the way back to my days as managing partner of Arnold and Porter, when Esther, whom I quickly nicknamed the Velvet Python, <laughs> latched onto me as a volunteer 
to help preach the gospel of pro bono. Little did I know that my volunteering would stretch into what is now its third decade. Esther is one of those rare people who develops a clear vision of the way things ought to be and then pursues her objectives with tireless effort to see it through. The causes of civil rights and equal access to justice in America owe much to her relentless determination. Words can simply not fully express our collective gratitude to Esther for her hard work, dedication, leadership, and vision that have helped transform the landscape of pro bono, not just for law firms, but in corporate law departments and public interest organizations in this country and indeed around the globe. Finally, I would like to also thank our distinguished co-chairs for this evening's dinner, Ivan Fong from 3M, Bret Hart from United, and Greg Jordan from PNC. We are grateful for your support and substantial efforts to make this evening a success. Thank you also to all of our generous sponsors whose support make the ongoing work of PBI possible. And now please join me in welcoming to the stage an old friend, a long committed champion of pro bono, Greg Jordan, Executive Vice President, General Counsel, Head of Regulatory and Government Affairs, could they have gotten the title any longer, <laughs> of the PNC Financial Services Group. Greg. It is a long title, but I can assure you that job is a lot easier than running a big law firm. Um, it is great to be here tonight. And ask yourself during the course of the evening, is there anything more important that you do as a lawyer than the pro bono work that we're all here about tonight? And is there anything you're more proud of? And is there anything you feel better about? And I think the answer will be no to all those questions. Uh, I'm really here to, uh, on behalf of my co-chairs, Ivan and Brett, uh, welcome you all tonight. Thank all of you for coming. We're going to have a great evening to the PBI staff. Let's hear it for them. They've put all this together. Fantastic. I want to thank uh, Jim and the entire PBI board of directors for their uh, great work over the years and to make this possible, and all the law firms uh, who are here and, and part of the the challenge that uh, Esther issued 20 years ago, and now almost 150 law firms have taken up the challenge, and that's really what we're here uh, to celebrate tonight. Uh, but of course, I want to add my special thanks, uh, Esther, to, to you and your vision. Uh, as you look around here tonight, just remember, none of this would be here if it wasn't for you. Uh, at PNC, we are in our first year of having a pro bono initiative. Um, when I went over there a couple of years ago, uh, I thought it was something that a, a, a leading bank with a, a Main Street community focus uh, should have. Uh, I found a volunteer uh, on my team, Mark Gittleman, who has done a great job. And the first thing I did is introduce him to Eve and Esther and said, listen to them, they'll tell us how to do it, and they did. So one year into it, we have 100 projects that are already underway in the law department. Uh, we're looking forward to great things uh, ahead. Uh, it's not 20 years, uh, but, it's a, but it's a great start. And again, it wouldn't happen, but for PBI and the great work and leadership uh, they've uh, shown. Um, my first 29 years uh, as a lawyer was at Reed Smith. Uh, and um, I'm happy and proud that Reed Smith uh, was one of the original charter signatories to the pro bono challenge for law firms when it was issued uh, 20 years ago. Uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's been a great uh, privilege to be involved in that. Of course, we're looking for firms to do 3 to 5 percent of their hours in the pro bono world, and many uh, are, are far surpassing that. Uh, that challenge has become the gold standard for pro bono in our profession. Uh, the American lawyer and everybody else who writes about it tracks it based upon the PBI standard and the PBI challenge. Uh, over the course of 20 years, the signatories have done more than 60 million hours of pro bono work. 60 million hours. Last year alone, 5 million hours by the signatories. 
5 million hours at $300 an hour, $1.5 billion. We need to tell that story. The legal profession and PBI need to, to be recognized for driving back and helping worthy causes and people who need our help. $1.5 million right now. Some of you are doing the math. 300 bucks an hour? Where's this dude coming from? <laughs> we have a lot of law firms who work for us in this room, and I do not want them to think I would use a higher number than that when doing a math equation like that. Uh, but, it, but whether it's $1.5 billion or $2.5 billion, uh, that's a huge contribution just in the last year alone. And think about 60 million hours by the law firms who have been signatories over this 20-year period. It's a great story. We need to tell people about it. And again, it's a fantastic thing to be, to be part of. Helping people who need our help. Helping communities who need our help. That's what we do. And not every profession does it. We should be proud. Uh, lawyers are, are getting criticized uh, more than they should. Sometimes if you read the newspaper, you think the only two kinds of lawyers are unemployed and unhappy. Uh, that's not true. We're doing great things, and we should, uh, we should uh, make sure we, we get recognized for that. My last uh, act up here is to welcome Kim Coopersmith, my uh, friend and, and longtime colleague and the chair of Aiken Gump, uh, to speak further on behalf of the pro bono law firm challenge and the success we've had over the years. Kim. Thank you, everybody. so much, Greg, and thank you for not being tall. Last week I spoke and I followed someone who was 6'4", and I about halfway through realized that no one could hear me because the microphone was up here, so thank you, thank you. Um, I, I am indeed tonight so honored and privileged to celebrate the 20th anniversary of PBI's law firm pro bono challenge with all of you, and really to have the privilege of speaking for all of the signatory firms. I'm proud that my firm, Aiken Gump, like many others represented here tonight, is a charter signatory to the challenge. As a result of our participation in the challenge, we and all of the signatory firms have seen a dramatic improvement in our pro bono performance, the pro bono culture at our firms, and the impact of our pro bono work over the past 20 years. Our commitment to serving clients in need irrespective of their ability to pay, is unequivocal at all of our firms, from asylum applicants fleeing persecution, to U.S. servicemen and women accessing benefits, to disadvantaged school children and their families working to better themselves in our country. As we reflect on the creation of the Pro Bono Institute, what now seems just and right and inevitable was 20 years ago viewed as unheard of, unthinkable, and in some respects, downright radical. It seems amazing, but no one had thought of a project that would be a centralized resource for advice, counsel, wisdom, and other assistance to major law firms seeking to formalize and enhance their pro bono efforts. And then someone did think of that idea, and that someone is Esther Lardent, and that has changed everything about pro bono everything about pro bono, and I think on behalf of all of us, I can only say thank you. So the, the pro bono project was born. Its leadership came up with a simple but brilliant plan, establish what had never existed, a set of benchmarks by which firms would measure and assess the effectiveness of their pro bono efforts. Using persuasion, research, analysis, peer pressure, competition, I think many glasses of wine, cajoling law firm leaders to get with the program, the law firm projects and its pro bono challenge have developed into critical resources for major law firms, enabling us to weather the ups and downs of the legal economy, changes at our firms while remaining constant and steadfast in our commitment to pro bono. Pro bono and the challenge are at heart about people, those who desperately need legal assistance to address the most basic elements of human existence, 
people whose lives and communities are better and stronger because of the power of law and the justice system to remedy wrongs and secure opportunities. Pro bono is also about the volunteers who provide pro bono assistance, our lawyers and staff whose lives are also transformed when they use their skills and expertise for the greater good. Tonight, along with my co-chair, Regina Pisa, and the law firm Project Advisory Committee, we congratulate all of our law firm challenge signatories for their dedication to pro bono, and I wish them continued success as they work to ensure equal justice for all. So I do say to everyone, all of the challenge signatories, A, you have a little gift coming to recognize your contribution to the law firm pro bono challenge, which you will get in the mail. But more importantly at this point, I'd like to recognize all of our challenge signatories in attendance. If you are a challenge signatory firm, please proudly stand up at your table and be recognized. Thank you, everybody. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Bill Perlstein, Senior Deputy General Counsel, BNY Mellon. Uh, good evening. Uh, I am Bill Perlstein. I am currently the Senior Deputy General Counsel of BNY Mellon, and I'm also honored to be here tonight in my capacity as the former co-managing partner of Wilmer, Cutler, Pickering, Hale, and Dorr to present the 2015 John H. Pickering Award. The Pickering Award was, of course, the idea of Esther Lardet, and it's given by PBI in conjunction with the Pickering family in Wilmer, Hale, and was created to honor a man whose career of service stretched back to World War II, but whose goals and ideals are perhaps more relevant now than ever. John Pickering was a founding partner of Wilmer, Cutler, and Pickering. Unlike uh, Aiken Gump, Richard Wilmer pulled rank on Lloyd Cutler and put his name first, and was a visionary who saw the importance and value of pro bono as an essential component of our justice system long before many others did. As an interesting aside, one of the very first leaders in the pro bono effort was the first managing partner of Hale and Dorr, Reginald Haver Smith, who wrote the pamphlet Justice and the Poor in 1919, a true visionary. John Pickering understood that being a great lawyer meant engaging in the vital issues of the day and ensuring equal access to justice was the highest calling of all lawyers. The more renowned and busy that John became, the more pro bono work he undertook. He was proud that the law firm that he helped build for many reasons, but more than anything else, he believed that the measure of a great firm was his commitment to pro bono service and that pro bono was the work not just of junior associates, but of the firm's most senior and prestigious lawyers. While John was involved in the wealth of, wealth of worthy causes, he was particularly proud of his role in launching PBI's law firm pro bono challenge. John did not wax nostalgic about the good old days of law firm practice. He often reminded us that those days were not particularly good for women or for minorities entering the profession or for the poor or the disadvantaged who desperately needed legal help. John looked forward and believed that the creation of the challenge signaled that an important shift in the values culture and future of major law firms. He was extremely proud of the unflinchingly ambitious goals of the challenge and was so committed to those goals that he enlisted his dear friend, Justice William Brennan, to help him in efforts to recruit firms to the law firm challenge. He and Justice Brennan were in attendance, front and center, at the official launch. John took particular delight in the fact that his firm became the very first pro bono, pro bono signatory. He ensured its status as the signatory, charter signatory, by personally walking a signed copy of the enrollment form 
over to the offices of the law firm Pro Bono Project as soon as the firm received its invitation to join. And as he liked to tease his own law firm's management, which was me, only after signing the challenge that we would commit 5 percent of our work to pro bono work did he tell firm, law firm management that he was doing that. <clears throat> as Esther knows, that is a true story. There have to be some perks for being the name founding partner, even if your name was third uh, uh, in the list. This year's recipient of the Pickering Award, Sidley Austin, has continued John's legacy with its outstanding institutional commitment to pro bono and the inspiring pro bono performance of its lawyers and its staff. Sidley's pro bono program has reached far and wide, covering numerous areas of the law, including protecting First Amendment rights and religious freedom, representing criminal defendants and prisoners on death row, preserving low-income housing, supporting community development, defending immigrants' rights, ensuring veterans receive benefits to which they're entitled, and helping families and children achieve safety and stability. With 18 death row clients, Sidley represents more inmates and devotes more resources to capital cases than any other law firm in the country. As others have said, the firm sets the gold standard in the pro bono representation of death row inmates. The firm has also pioneered the use of firm-wide signature projects to organize pro bono efforts throughout the firm to leverage its expertise and resources. In addition to the capital litigation project, Sidley administers its political asylum and immigrants' rights project, the veterans' benefits project, and its newest and first international firm-wide project, the Africa and Asia Agricultural Enterprise Program. It is for these reasons and more that Sidley is so deserving of the 2015 John Pickering Award. I want to end, end with one more thought to echo what Greg Jordan said. It is fashionable to bash lawyers and especially fashionable to bash big firm lawyers. It's also fashionable to bash banks, which is where I get to do both, uh, and corporations. As we proceed tonight to talk about the Pickering Award and the award to my current firm colleagues at BNY Mellon, I ask you to think of any other profession where so many give so much of their time and money and heartfelt efforts to so much in need. Often it is for unpopular causes and for those that nobody else will support and protect. The pro bono tradition started by Reginald Haber Smith, encouraged by Esther Laudent, and supported by John Pickering and his colleagues at my former firm is one that should make us all proud to be lawyers every day of the week. With that said, to receive the award on behalf of the Sidley firm, please welcome pro bono doer and champion, the chair of Sidley Austin's executive committee, my friend Carter Phillips. for that uh, kind and uh, powerful introduction. Uh, I take enormous comfort in knowing that there is life after management in a big law firm. <laughs> I always wonder about that, at the, at, particularly at my age. Um, thank you to everyone at PBI, the Pickering family, family, and Wilmer Hale for this meaningful honor. I'm proud to accept the award on behalf of Sidley Austin. I think I speak for everyone at the firm when I say what a privilege it is to be recognized with an award bearing the name of John Pickering, a man who led by example and who passionately and meaningfully incorporated pro bono work into his law practice. It's particularly meaningful to me as a D.C. lawyer. He is a true legend in that community and uh, justifiably so. And his example lives on in the great pro bono program of Wilmer Hale today. John's leadership, passion, and genuine commitment to helping others have been guiding forces behind our pro bono program, and they inform our participation in the PBI's law firm pro bono challenge. Indeed, the challenge has served an important role within the legal profession generally, helping all of us to organize our efforts and to energize 
each of our firms to uphold our obligations to the public interest and give back to the communities in which we operate. I want to thank everyone at Sidley for their hard work and dedication to the pro bono efforts that we put forward. Special credit belongs to the current firm-wide head of pro bono, Jeff Green, and his predecessor, Ron Flagg, who is now the general counsel of the Legal Services Corporation and, uh, and here tonight. I'm very happy. And I'd like to thank our pro bono counsel, Becky Troth, in the D.C. office and Kelly Huggins in Chicago, who has the extraordinary task of trying to monitor the death penalty work that we do in Alabama, which is, uh, to my mind, an extraordinary both commitment on our part but uh, amazingly rewarding efforts. Uh, Sidley is going to celebrate its 150th anniversary next year, and it's, but that history reveals a firm whose commitment to pro bono is actually longstanding and deeply embedded. Shortly after its founding in 1866, Sidley lawyers began representing charitable organizations, and we've been a major supporter of the Legal Aid Bureau in Chicago since its founding in 1905. I was not there at the time, by the way. As, as our geographic footprint has continued to expand, so has the influence of our pro bono culture. We now have vibrant pro bono programs in every one of our U.S. offices, and as Bill mentioned, we've now expanded to a global pro bono enterprise. We are proud of all of those endeavors, but our firm-wide projects that Bill described are unique because they allow us to build a reservoir of expertise and experience that enhances our ability to make a significant difference for clients in those specific areas. Our knowledge of Alabama post-conviction procedures, of conditions in countries in which human rights are routinely violated, of the bureaucracy that denies payments to veterans disabled in the service of our country, and the export-import laws that thwart the efforts of poor farmers and other merchants to sell their goods means that with each new pro bono client, we do not need to reinvent the wheel. By drawing on the experience of all firm lawyers who have worked on these projects, we can increase the number of people we serve and foster a spirit of community among our firm lawyers as they work toward a shared goal. At Sidley, we know that our pro bono work has improved the lives of many people across the country and around the world. We also know that our pro bono service has made us better lawyers and better people and feel better about the profession that we have joined. Once again, I want to thank the Pro Bono Institute John Pickering's family, and Wilmer Hale for this wonderful award. It is a humbling experience to stand in front of you and accept it, but I really do accept it on behalf of all of my colleagues at Sidley. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ivan Fong, Senior Vice President, Legal Affairs and General Counsel of 3M Company. Congratulations again to Sidley and Austin for their outstanding pro bono efforts and for receiving the Pickering Award. Thank you all for being here tonight. It's my job, in addition to standing between you and dinner, to add my welcome to that of Brett and Greg's as a co-chair of tonight's PBI annual dinner. As you've heard, this is a particularly important year in PBI's history. All of us associated with the Pro Bono Institute and corporate pro bono are proud to salute our law firm pro bono challenge signatories and their law firm leaders. We are deeply grateful for your strong leadership and unwavering dedication to pro bono legal services. Indeed, the law firm pro bono challenge has been an essential part of the transformation of pro bono. Without it, we would be looking at a vastly different culture of pro bono among large law firms and in-house law departments. The challenge has not only been a tool to motivate us to do more and better pro bono, it's also allowed us to benchmark and see the progress that firms have made as they've integrated pro bono into the mission and practice of their institutions. And what's especially gratifying to me, that spirit of pro bono has evolved and spread to the corporate community with the rise of formal pro bono programs at in-house legal departments, many of which are represented here tonight. Now, some of you may know that I came to 3M after serving in the government, and as a result, I'm sometimes asked, how is working in the public sector different from working in the private sector? You'll have to ask me in person to get the full answer, <laughs> but thinking about tonight's event, 
brings to mind an interesting difference that I had not previously appreciated. When I was in government, there were certain ceremonial aspects of my job, and that included times when the main event was preceded by a unison recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Remember the Pledge of Allegiance? Most of us probably last said it when we were in grade school. The reason I bring it up now is that tonight's event reminds me of the significance of its closing lines. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At its core, PBI and corporate pro bono are dedicated to ensuring that we all collectively live up to our cherished ideal of justice for all. So while tonight is a celebration, it must also be a renewal of that commitment. While congratulations are in order, complacency is not. As Nelson Mandela said, overcoming poverty is not a task of charity, it's an act of justice. So I ask all of us here tonight to rededicate ourselves to the true and paramount task that lies before us, to work together toward justice for all. Thank you all. Thank you, Esther, for your vision and leadership. Please enjoy your dinner. We'll be back shortly with the rest of tonight's program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Williams, Managing Principal, Policy, Government Relations, and Citizenship of Deloitte LLP, and member of the Pro Bono Institute Board of Directors, and Tom Sabatino, Senior Executive Vice President, Chief Administrative Officer, and General Counsel of Hertz Global Holdings Incorporated. I hope everybody enjoyed dinner as much as we did. Um, one of the best things about this dinner, at least for me, is that it brings uh, together a community of folks united in dedication to pro bono. We get to catch up, enjoy each other's company, and to celebrate this work that means so much to so many, where we get an opportunity to make a real difference in our communities and, quite frankly, in our world. Tom and I, quiet as it's kept, have absolutely the best job of the night and that is we get to begin the process of this rest of the program tribute to uh, our friend, our colleague, Esther Lardent. I hope we're up to it because it's also one of the hardest assignments that we have because between us, Tom, we only have seven minutes or some ridiculously some ridiculously small number that Tom's going to ignore, and you've seen me before, you know I'm just going to completely ignore it. Um, most of you are aware of Esther's achievements and accolades. There are way too many of them uh, for us to do justice to in the time we have. But I would say this. It's important for us to celebrate them. Um, when people like Esther do amazing things, we tend to move from the first amazing thing to the next, to the next, to the next, which happens early and often with Esther, but we don't ever get a chance to step back and look at the body of work. So the body of work tends to go unappreciated. So let's not do that tonight. Let's start this notion with one simple truth. When we think of an individual who's had both a powerful and lasting impact on the legal profession, a person who's made a real difference, Pro Bono Institute founder Esther Lardent is at the top of the list. I've found most high flyers like Esther have something in their backgrounds, in their hearts, in their souls that drive them to great achievement. I think many of you know, but many of you also might not be aware of what we might call the significant driving force behind what Esther has accomplished. Esther is the daughter of two Holocaust survivors who came to the United States from Poland in poor health and speaking no English. 
the odds were stacked against her like so many of the pro bono clients that we all represent. If you know Esther, it's no surprise that she took the opportunities that were given to her and obtained an undergraduate degree from Brown University and a law degree from the University of Chicago Law School. And then, with that background, immediately went to work to fight for civil rights and access to justice. In 1977, she was selected as the first executive director of the Volunteer Lawyers Project of the Boston Bar Association, which was one of the first pro bono programs organized in the country, and it was the key to laying the foundation for the work she did later in her career. Esther's roots in helping the poor and the disadvantaged run deep, and the tree that has sprouted from those roots climbs high. Um, I can speak on behalf of many of us in this room of the profound effect that Esther has had on our profession, and more importantly, on the community of lawyers like all of us here in this room who dedicate our skills, time, and energy to attempting to close the justice gap. Closing that gap is one common bond between all of us and, frankly, why we're all here tonight. As the number of underserved and disadvantaged individuals rises, so does the need for creative, innovative, and results-driven programs. If Esther has taught us anything over the last 20 years, it's that we have to think outside of the box. We have to continually evolve to be agents of change, like Esther herself. And we have to be, a, and we now are about to take that next step toward that goal. Pro Bono Institute is delighted to embark on a new and exciting opportunity to continue Esther's legacy with your help. I truly am humbled to be able to say that we are launching the Esther F. Lardent Fund for Innovation in Pro Bono. This fund has been created by PBI's Board of Directors to support new and innovative pro bono programs that will benefit countless individuals in need of our help. For those of you who know Esther well, we are sure you agree that there is no better way to honor her life and her commitment to ensuring equal justice, equal access, excuse me, equal access to justice than laying the foundation to support innovation in pro bono now and hopefully long into the future. This is a time of profound crisis in legal services, but it's also a time of great opportunity to make the changes necessary to fulfill the promise of pro bono as a vital element of our legal system. Esther's leadership is unparalleled. Um, you've heard all about her great work tonight. You all know Esther, so I can't tell you anything you already don't know about all of her great accomplishments and every honor and recognition that she's had worldwide, and they are all incredibly well-deserved. But the true reward is the number of people out there who have been benefited from, Esther, your steadfast commitment to addressing the access to justice crisis. As David noted, your drive to help others and encourage all lawyers to do the same comes from your own heart and from your own history. The Esther F. Lardent Fund for Innovation Pro Bono will ensure that Esther's vision of a society in which everyone receives equal treatment under the law remains strong and that the work to realize that vision through new and innovative initiatives, which has been a hallmark of Esther's life, will continue for generations to come. And it really is up to us to carry on that legacy. It will honor a woman that many of us are truly blessed to know and to call a friend. Okay, so now's the ask. On the table in front of you is a gift bag. That includes a card to make a contribution to the Esther F. Lardent Fen for Innovation and Pro Bono. The card is, conveniently enough, tucked neatly beside a champagne glass which you can either take home or perhaps use tonight, if you're so inclined, to celebrate your commitment. All we're asking is that you think about a contribution of any amount to help us build on and expand the work we've done. I have mine, like, right here someplace. Um, so I've got mine, and I've already filled it out, and I'm making my contribution. 
If you'd like to make a contribution tonight, please fill out the pledge card and hand it to one of our staff members. Drop it in a box by the door. We take credit card payments. And we can do that inside. Uh, small amounts of cash and unmarked bills would probably be fine too. Um, please ask a staff member to assist. In all seriousness, if you have ever been inspired by Esther's wonderful work, please make a pledge so we can raise a glass both to Esther and to you. And we'll have good reason to toast. Remember that your gift will be used to continue Esther's lifelong work to create new and innovative programs that will get us one step closer to closing the justice gap. We'll use it to grow PBI's work to take on new initiatives to reach so many individuals who so desperately need our help. It goes without saying that Esther Lardent is a shining star in our world. She lights the way for all of us who pursue increased access to justice. And she just lights our way because she's a wonderful person. Please let us be those stars in her constellation and carry the, the torch on the path to justice. Thank you for all that you do for our profession. Together, we can continue this drive. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Leach, Group Vice President and General Counsel of Ford Motor Company. Thank you and good evening. Uh, I am privileged to serve on the advisory board of Corporate Pro Bono, PBI's partnership project with the Association of Corporate Counsel. Corporate Pro Bono is one of Esther's remarkable contributions among many others. When Esther first formed PBI almost 20 years ago, in-house pro bono was in its infancy. Only a handful of legal departments had developed formal programs to engage their legal staff in pro bono service. When Esther and the Association of Corporate Counsel formed Corporate Pro Bono in 2000, there were still only a couple dozen formal in-house pro bono programs. Now there are hundreds, literally hundreds. In fact, Corporate Pro Bono has worked with more than 800 legal departments of varying sizes across all industries, which have provided pro bono services in more than 40 countries. Over 140 chief legal officers have signed the Corporate Pro Bono Challenge, committing to encourage at least 50% of their legal staff to engage in pro bono. Many of those departments exceeded that benchmark in 2014. It is Esther's commitment and vision that have influenced these developments. Esther, we salute you, we cherish you, and most importantly, as we move forward, we will work hard to build on your legacy. As Esther and her team look to develop and support the growth of in-house pro bono, they created an award designed to celebrate the collaborative nature of in-house pro bono. Esther and her team recognized that for leanly resourced in-house departments, and yes, we are leanly resourced, Working on pro bono in partnership with law firms and or public interest organizations would increase their ability to engage in and impact communities in need. When organizations join together, they have an exponentially greater impact than they would on their own. The CPBO Pro Bono Partner Award recognizes these remarkable partnerships. To receive this award, recipients, which include one or more legal departments, law firms, and or public interest organizations must address a critical need or particularly vulnerable community, demonstrate a high degree of participation by in-house lawyers, and employ an innovative approach to the delivery of pro bono legal services. This year, Corporate Pro Bono presents for the first time two pro bono partner awards, yet another indication of the incredible growth of pro bono service by legal departments large and small. The first award will be presented to the recipients 
of the Pro Bono Partner Award Small Law category. I don't really like the name Small Law, but that's what we have. I think of lean and mean. <laughs> Pro Bono Machine. Maybe we can do that in the future, but for now it's called Small Law which honors pro, bo pro bono projects that demonstrate effective cooperation between legal departments with 49 or fewer attorneys, law firms, and or public interest organizations. The recipients of the 2015 Corp CPBO Pro Bono Partner Award, Small Law, embody this spirit of cooperation and collaboration are, and are an example of how partnerships can be used to serve our most fundamental needs. On behalf of Corporate Pro Bono, I am proud to announce the winners of the 2015 CPBO Pro Bono Award in this category are Best Buy in partnership with the Volunteer Lawyers Network for their long-standing efforts in assisting low-income and unrepresented litigants in court. Since the inception of its pro bono program in 2004, Best Buy has partnered with the VLN on a number of pro bono projects, in particular the Housing Court Project and Conciliation Court Clinic. Since then, every month, two of Best Buy's 38 attorneys staff the Housing Court Project, working alongside a legal aid attorney to prepare low-income tenants to appear in court. In addition, for more than 35 weeks per year, Best Buy attorneys meet with low-income clients, helping them with conciliation court matters. This longtime partnership has helped produce significant expertise among the Best Buy volunteers, allowing VLN to confidently refer the most difficult cases to the clinics where Best Buy lawyers are present. This ongoing project, helping one client at a time, committing a few hours regularly for the past 10 years, has changed the lives of hundreds in need. CPBO congratulates Best Buy and VLN for their dedication and commitment to the community. Accepting the award on behalf of the partnership is Keith Nelson, General Counsel for Best Buy. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, thanks to the CPBO and the Pro Bono Institute for uh, honoring our team with this award tonight, uh, especially in view of uh, so many of the great companies that are here and even not here that, uh, that would be so deserving and who have programs that uh, are similar to ours devoted to this, uh, this very great need that we, have, uh, that we have in our country today and, and elsewhere for that matter. Um, to go off script for a second, uh, I got a call from Brad Smith uh, several months ago um, about this award, and, and he was, uh, was, of course, on the advisory board uh, of CPBO. And uh, we have a long and very large, long-standing, very large relationship with Microsoft, and it's uh, it's important to both of us. It's a terrific relationship. It's you know complex in certain ways, um, and and when we've had issues issues in the past, uh, Brad and I have sometimes been called on to. Uh, get involved and get them sorted out. So when my secretary, my administrative assistant, who uh, who knows about our relationship, kind of sheepishly poked her head in a few months ago and said, "Brad Smith is on the line from Microsoft." Uh, you know, in addition to the beads that started forming on my uh, you know on my forehead and the question in my mind, which was, "What did we just do now?" Uh, it uh, it was uh, it was terrific when I picked up the phone. He said, "Keith." I'm giving you good news. Uh, first, first words out of his mouth. So, uh, thank you, uh, Brad, for that call, and, and, and thank you again, CPBO and, and PBI, for uh, for considering us for this award. Uh, I also want to give a special thank you to Volunteer Lawyers Network, with whom we've had a, a 12 or so year uh, partnership. Uh, it's been wonderful. We thank them for not only nominating us uh, for this award, but also for the great partnership that we have with them, and, and for the great work that they're doing. I'm very personally humbled to be here because uh, I've been with Best Buy for nine years and four uh, of those, the last four of those in the, in the role that I have, but I can claim you know, almost no 
credit for what our team has done. We actually have uh, two of our true heroes with us uh, tonight. I do want to introduce uh, Jody Hagstrom and Janet Lambert. You guys, please stand. They have been with this program uh, from day one, have been true pioneers uh, in it for us, and uh, have spent countless uh, hours on this program, so I could not be more proud to call them uh, colleagues. Um, Janet is now a member of the VLN board and uh, continues to be a, a very positive driver throughout our group uh, in terms of the, the activities that we have uh, underway. I also want to thank Joe Joyce. He's my predecessor. He was the general counsel at Best Buy for some 25 years and, and really was the leader uh, who brought this to, to fruition. Um, the one way that I've tried to carry on the legacy of, of Joe and, and also honor uh, a leadership principle that we have a dear at Best Buy is to just ensure that our legal team knows that they have unfettered ability to go out and serve uh, in these ways. No questions asked, always encouraged. Um, and uh, I just know them all, and I know, you know they're responsible and they will take on their responsibilities, but this is incredibly important to them. So what we try and do is make sure that they know uh, that they can do it and that they can do it with uh, wind at their back and, and uh, you know, with our full in endorsement. So um, we, we're very proud of the work that our, our team has done. I want to call out a couple of others, Noreen Shirtler, Frank Janes, Ryan Eddy, Mark Odegaard, Vanessa DeCourcy, Carrie Helper. These are uh, people who serve as the backbone of our program. There are many others uh, who serve, but there's been, you know, a consistency for us over the last 12 years that include uh, all of those uh, people. Uh, back in 2004, uh, the Minnesota, St Minnesota State Bar issued a call to honor, uh, which was a rallying cry for corporate in-house legal departments to begin serving uh, in this capacity, and Best Buy uh, answered in a very big way. I think um, we've already heard a little bit about the program that I was going to talk to you about, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll not uh, recap again what was said, but our lawyers have handled about 1,200 uh, matters and clients over the last uh, number of years and primarily in the housing court and in the uh, conciliation uh, court clinics. Also have handled uh, criminal matters and uh, other things that have been important to VLN clients over time. I talked to VLN in advance of this and they said they typically save their you know, most difficult cases for our staff because of the experience that we've uh, built up. But I, in talking to the lawyers that are serving uh, on our staff in anticipation of this evening, I just heard so many uh, wonderful stories about the successes that they have had, um, anywhere from getting security deposits back from unscrupulous landlords to, you know, conciliation court matters, to paychecks that are due but uh, employers aren't paying, that but for, you know, the involvement our, of our attorneys might just go un, unpaid. And $100, $200, $500 uh, to the people that we're serving you know, can often mean the difference between a warm place to sleep uh, and a decent meal. And uh, they take that very seriously, and, uh, and I was very moved, um, you know, in preparing for this by the many stories that, uh, that our team uh, had. So um, I want to again thank CPBO P uh, and PBI, uh, your efforts uh, in continuing to put a spotlight on pro bono, in particular for us, uh, in the corporate legal department uh, realm, uh, I think is uh, just producing amazing results. To be able to uh, be here, Esther, with you and, and hear about your uh, accomplishments has been incredibly inspiring. I can't uh, even begin to tell you. So to each of you, I would just say there's, there's a need out there. Um, you know, we've all seen the data that says that four of the five clients that need these types of services uh, go unserved. So. I use tonight as a call uh, to duty for myself, uh, for my team. There is always uh, the opportunity to do more. And I think even if you're not out there in the trenches uh, serving, you know, you can make it known to your partners and colleagues and associates and members of your legal department that it is okay uh, for them to do so. So I just want to say thank you very much again.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vita Richardson, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Association of Corporate Counsel. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm very happy to be here because for almost 20 years, the Association of Corporate Counsel has been a proud ally to the Pro Bono Institute through the partnership that launched and continues as Corporate Pro Bono. So it's very wonderful to be here on this very special evening as we join with the Pro Bono Institute to celebrate the accomplishments of law firms, corporate legal departments, and public organi interest organizations to honor PBI's founder, Esther Lardet. Esther is a hero to many of us, and so on behalf of the Association of Corporate Counsel, we offer you our heartfelt thanks, and thanks to the PBI board and staff, as well as all of the law firms and legal departments whose contributions have so profoundly benefited the communities in which they live and work. It has been ACC's privilege to work with Esther now for almost 20 years, and as PBI and Esther embark on a new chapter in their rich legacy of service, ACC looks forward to continuing to collaborate with PBI, to continue the partnership of corporate pro bono, and to work with and engage with the many law firms and legal departments that are a part of this great community. This evening, though, I have the distinct honor and privilege of presenting the second of the two 2015 CPBO Pro Bono Partner Awards. This award will be presented to the recipients of the Pro Bono Partner Award Large Law category, which honors pro bono projects that demonstrate effective cooperation between legal departments with 50 or more lawyers and one or more law firms or public interest organizations. Similar to um, the small law category, award-winning projects must address a critical legal need or serve a particularly vulnerable community. It must demonstrate a high degree of participation by in-house lawyers and employ an innovative approach to the delivery of legal services. On behalf of Corporate Pro Bono, I am proud to announce the winner of the 2015 CPBO Pro Bono, Pro Bono Partner Award Large Law Category is the Bank of New York Mellon Corporation in partnership with White and, Ch White and Case and the National LGBT Bar Association. <laughs> For their, for their important work, for their important work and in innovative resources in support of an underserved community. In 2014, BNY Mellon, White and Case, and the National LGBT Bar Association partnered to create an online LGBT tax resource center which provides state-specific tax information for same-sex couples. Together, they leveraged technology to utilize the research and drafting that was conducted by dozens of attorneys and assistants throughout the U.S. The results gave taxpayers and preparers the most comprehensive state-by-state -state information for LGBT families that had ever been available. And to accommodate rapidly evolving laws, the partners have demonstrated their ongoing commitment by updating the resource twice a year since it was launched in the spring of 2014. In fact, they plan to do so again to reflect the guidance that has been issued by states in the wake of this year's historic U.S. Supreme Court decision which upheld same-sex marriage and made it legal throughout the United States. The project is an example of working not more, but working smarter. And these partners identified an unmet legal need, and working together, they created a response that serves many more than the individuals involved could ever assist one-on-one -on, -one on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So CPBO congratulates BNY Mellon, White and Case, and the National LGBT Bar Association for their dedication and continued work in support of this far-reaching and impactful project. Accepting the award on behalf of the combined partnership is BNY Mellon Senior Deputy General Counsel, Bill Perlstein. So Bill, can you join me on stage to accept the award? Uh, thanks, Vita, and uh, good evening again. Um, it's really terrific to be able to be at uh, really what is a very special event. I must have done 100 or 150 of these events uh, during my time uh, as managing partner, warmer and otherwise. Uh, and I do want to say to the PBI staff uh, that this one is one that is truly memorable. It has really been a remarkable uh, evening, and so I. I don't know whether Jim is planning to do it, but I'll preempt him since he and I are close friends. Uh, and really want to thank the PBI staff for putting together really a spectacular program. Uh, on behalf of BNY Mellon and our colleagues at White and Case and the National LGBT uh, Bar Association, I really do. Uh, uh, thank you for the award and thanks to the PBI and the CPBO for recognizing the work. We couldn't be here without the cooperation of all of these uh, folks. I want to particularly thank Dorothy, Dorothy Kimnitz, the Executive Director of the National LGBT um, Bar Association, who first identified the need for this project, Lou O'Neill, the Director of White and Case's Pro Bono Program, John Willis, the tax partner of White and Case, who put together the team that led this effort, and the terrific lawyers from BNY Mellon, who are many of whom are here tonight from Los Angeles, from Wilmington, uh, from New York, and from Pittsburgh. Why don't we have all of you who were part of this uh, stand and get the recognition that you do? Equality really was the driving force when uh, the, the bank and White and & Case and the LGBT bar decided to create the online LGBT tax resource. Uh, they obviously saw an injustice, an area of the law in which certain members of our society were being excluded from experiencing the same rights and privileges as everyone else simply based on their sexual orientation. With LGBT rights being at the forefront of the country's civil rights agenda, they were able to use their expertise to help hundreds of same-sex couples who were excessively burdened each year when doing an ordinary task that we all do. And let me tell you, I took tax law. It's hard enough anyway. Uh, uh, but to be able to try to prepare and file taxes uh, with a maze of uh, laws that, that applied. Uh, when they began the project, the Supreme Court had not yet ruled on the question of marriage equality as it did uh, in June. Uh, at that time, same-sex couples were forced to navigate the confusing and conflicting laws, rulings, and guidance between the IRS, which did recognize their status, and the majority of states, which did not. Finally, re finally requirements for these couples differed markedly from state to state and sometimes were not even known. Even s recognizing states were inconsistent in matters like tax amendments and other issues. Uh, it was a mess, that's a technical tax legal term, uh, and good authority was sorely needed that were dedicated to the needs of L LGBT uh, couples. Um, they were the, our group was the, thus presented with a, a unique opportunity culminating in what is now the online LGBT tax resource. Together, the teams researched, drafted, launched, and updated a first-of-its-kind online resource tool. With this tool, same-sex couples and their tax advisors, for the first time, had a single, unified, comprehensive, and authoritative source for tax laws, administrative guidance, and case law that affected them across the 50 states. A resource, as Vita said, uh, we, we're keeping updated as state laws surrounding same-sex couples have continued to evolve. I'll go off script and Darcy. Um, it seemed to me it was the same idea that Uber had 
and too bad we didn't patent it because really uh, you know, th then PBI wouldn't have to do the Esther Larden fundraising. We'd all be set. Uh, but with uh, uh, LGBT couples now having a much, much simpler process for navigating the often unique and complex tax fine landscape facing them, they now have the online LGBT resource, whatever their jurisdiction or their situation. This, em this effort em emphasizes the trend of organizations like BNY Mellon seeking out new opportunities in new and innovative ways for in our in-house staff to be able to, to assist in pro bono matters. Uh, it is really, uh, I've been around the legal profession for more than 40 years. Uh, the, the change in avoiding the siloing that we had of being able to bring together the private bar, uh, the pro bono organizations, the in-house corporate legal offices allows us to, to accomplish far more together than any group could have ever been able to do on its own. Collectively, we have the skills, the tools, the resources, and the technology to collaborate more effectively and efficiently than ever before. I'm proud to represent this project. It's great to be up here with uh, Tom Sabatino and uh, Greg Jordan uh, and uh, David Leach, who, by the way, just joined Bank of New York, Bank of America, now Bank of New York Mellon, but Bank of America, so he can too uh, uh, go and uh, uh, be uh, subject to uh, being bashed as both a lawyer and a banker. Um, uh, but it is great that you have the leadership of people like this who are able to say to their colleagues in-house, able to say the associates who are thinking about leaving private law firms and going to work in corporate legal departments, that you will be able to continue to do uh, this sort of work, that you will have the support of members of the executive committee of your companies to do that work. That's what you need to be able to do. You need to have that support to be able to say, when somebody's saying, are you available to do something, you say, I can't do it. I'm going to the landlord-tenant uh, um, um, uh, work this week and not have somebody look at you like, could you really be doing that? Because you need to have that support. I know that. Uh, and that's why it's so critical to have uh, folks like that in front of you saying, yes, we support it and we support it with our executive committees. Uh, and this is what we want you to do and we'll help you grow uh, and give back. So thank you to the PBI. Thanks to the CPBO. Thank to each one of you for coming. Thank you, Esther, for creating uh, this opportunity uh, for all of us, uh, and it's been just an absolutely terrific evening, and Jim, you are here somewhere, and you're going to close it up if there's anything left to say. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage Jim Jones. I've spent my life following around Bill Perlstein and with introductions like that. So, you know, wow, what a, what a wonderful evening, huh? Uh, on behalf of PBI, I, I want to congratulate all of tonight's honorees. Um, your inspiring examples really do encourage and, and energize all of us. Also, congratulations again to all of our law firm pro bono challenge signatory firms. We look forward to working with you to advance pro bono and access to justice for the next 20 years and probably even beyond. Uh, one would hope it wouldn't be necessary after that, but I'm afraid it may be. Thank you again to, all, to our co-chairs, to Ivan, to Brett, and to Greg for your generosity and leadership and support. And thank you to our founder, Esther Lordent. Can, can we have one more round of applause for Esther? You know, you know, somebody said to me earlier, you know, es Esther may have to leave early. She may not make it through the whole dinner. I said, no, no. Esther is going to be here till the bitter end because this is, this is great stuff. Uh, special thanks, uh, as Bill said, to PBI small but very dedicated staff without whom this evening and, frankly, most of all the other stuff that PBI does would simply not be possible. And now I'm pleased to say it's time to enjoy desserts and drinks, which will be served 
at the front of the hall, sort of to my left. Thank you all very much for coming to this very special evening, and good night. <laughs>